Okay, so we're going to move on to topic 2.6 now, which is really cool. It's on string objects. So uh, how do we make a string? You're probably going to say, let's write string. Um, I'll indent that, make it a little more neat. So uh, let's write string. We'll give it a name. Let's do option one. Let's say we're making a menu, and we'll put pizza. All right, boom, I just made a string right here. Uh, there's another way we can do that. So that way is with the string class. And stream objects can be created by using string literals or by calling the string class constructor. So here we use the literal. And now we're going to call the string class. How are we going to do that? So we're going to do string or string class. Then we're going to, of course, give it a name. So let's do option two. And then instead of just giving the string literal, we're going to put new, like it is a new object. Then we're going to do, oh my gosh, we're going to do the class name, string, and then in parentheses, our argument is going to be the string. So let's say burger. And there we go. We just made a string object. Let's do another one. Let's do option three is equal to new string. We'll just give it the same value as option one. And all we have to do is put option one's name in here. So this is going to have the value of pizza. Very, very cool. Uh, let's write some prices. So let's do double price one is equal to 12.50. Let's do double price two is equal to uh, 10.50. And double price three is equal to 13.50. OK, there we go. What we're going to do is we're going to make a string. So let's not let's not use a string class. Let's just make a string, and we'll call it pizza because we don't have a string named pizza yet. Uh, we have a string with the value with pizza, but we don't have a string named pizza yet. So we can do this. So we're going to do string pizza, and we're going to have it equal to option one. But I want it to display option one plus twelve fifty or twelve dollars fifty cents for option one. So how can we do this? Well, we're going to do option one. Then we're going to basically uh, do a plus symbol. This is not an integer or a double. It's not going to do any math. It's just going to kind of add it together to form one big string. So we're going to do option one, then plus a space. Uh, we'll do a dollar sign at the end of that. And then we'll do plus price one. So when we print out pizza, it's going to print out option one plus dollar sign plus price one. So here we go. So it's going to say pizza then a space, then $12.5. And it's not going to point out 0.50 because it's a trailing zero and it doesn't need it when we print it out. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, what else can we do? Let's do um, option three, which has the value of pizza. Let's do option three plus equals. Wait, we can do this? Yes. And it's just going to add on to the stream, make the stream bigger. So we're going to do option three plus price three, if it ever types. And then what we're going to do is I'll reprint pizza again because we're going to need to do something with that. And then we're going to print out. I cannot type this evening. Holy snap. Then we're going to print out option three. Very, very cool. So let's print that out. So we're going to have two lines because we have two print line statements. So it's going to print out uh, pizza 1250. And then it's going to print out pizza 1350. Now, where's the dollar sign? Where's the space? Well, I didn't actually add a space in there. I just added the price. So it's not going to assume there's a space in there. So it's just going to add it all together with no space whatsoever. So that's just something to keep note of. Now, let's add what we call escape sequences. And escape sequences start with a forward slash and have a special meaning in Java. Now, the three that we need to know for AP Computer Science A is the first one is going to be the new line escape sequence. The second one is to print out uh, quotation marks. And the third one is to print out forward slashes because, you know, we get syntax errors and we try to do that. So let's print out a new line. So what we're going to do is we're going to do pizza plus uh, in parentheses, forward slash n, and that's going to do a new line. So we're going to now print out three lines in our console. So as you can see here, we have three lines because of that. If we added a uh, forward slash n and then one, two, three, it's case sensitive, so we don't need to add the space there. It's going to print out one, two, three on that second line. If we did uh, forward slash and space one, two, three, then it's going to print out a space and then one, two, three on the next line because it is, you know, case sensitive. It's not going to register space there. So when it loads, you can see we have a space there. So that's just something to keep note of. What if we wanted to add 
a pair of quotation marks around pizza on line one. So let's go to pizza, which is our variable name. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put another pair of of quotations. Remember, all of these escape character, escape sequences is going to be within um, closed quotations. So we're going to do forward slash, and then we're just going to put one quotation, just one. If you have an IDE that adds a second one, delete it because you don't need it. And then we'll put it at the end here um, as well. And then it should print out uh, our escape sequence double quotations it's getting me an error there's probably like so much stuff going on here uh, oh i need to add my by plus here my assignment operators yep there we go debugging and then now it should work and then it's gonna work yeah see so we have our quotation marks here because of that escape sequence okay let's do the last one and we're just gonna make another Print line statement. So this is going to be our fourth line. And actually, I'll just do print. We don't need the print line. And we're just going to do in our closed quotations, forward slash, forward slash. So what's this going to print out, you may ask? Well, we have a forward slash and then a forward slash. So it's going to just print out a forward slash for us. So in case you ever need to print out a forward slash, this is how you do it. Very, very cool. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we just learned about the string class. We just learned about our escape sequences. Uh, the string class is part of the java.lang, the lang package. Classes in the java.lang package are available by default. You don't have to download anything. A string object has index values from 0 to length minus 1. In attempting to access um, anything out of this range will cause a string index out of bounds exception. Uh, and a string object can be... Um, so yeah, all of that stuff. And that is the end of the video for 2.7. And yeah, that is that. Uh, 2.7 is going to be up next. So we just finished 2.6. Yay, awesome, exciting. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's free and it really does help me out. I have more AP Computer Science videos. If you want to go check those out, uh, they're really, really helpful and all of that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.